fishing freaks. Welcome on back. Me and LFD are gonna do a little trout fishing today. On the great Tanny Como below Table Rock Lake. Lake I've fished many times. Love it up here. And I love fishing for smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth bass up here, but I've never ventured down here and fished for trout. So dad's got a little wild hair for trout. And he has convinced me to get get a tiny pole in line and try to go catch one of these trout. So joining dad for the day. We're gonna try to get a rainbow, maybe a what else is in here? A big brown. A big brown. And just enjoy the beauty of nature up here in the Ozarks. So come along, let's get our feet wet and let's get our danglers bent. <laughs> Best and camo. Hey, best Christmas gift ever. Hey, this thing is cool. I love how it comes up around your neck. Keeps you warm on the frosties? Yeah. It's gonna be a little different game. They've turned on the water. Oh, they have? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. May have to break out the bass rods. All right, so what I've, from what I understand so far is they have cranked up the flow uh, below this dam area. So I don't know how long it's gonna last, but what I'm gonna go with, this little clear floating bobber with flies. And this allows me to not put a fly rod in my hands, which, you know, I'm not very well trained with, but I am trained hard and well on this little guy right here. Thousand size Guggen spinning reel with our panfish series, or we call it our micro series rod. This is what I crappie fish with. You know, I caught trout on this. It's perfect for trout as well seven foot light action and I could just fling that out there and I'm going to go with a four pound test guys we don't even make a good four pound test I got four pound and I got two pound insane uh, I never fished with that light of line it's like a it's like hair it's like as thin as a, a human hair that's gonna be a difficult challenge but we'll see if there's some trout in the water out here see if they want to cooperate and uh, see if we can snatch them in the jowls I'm gonna let you guys know right now, I am a noob to trout fishing, but I like learning it. I, I like the challenge of it. Fly fishing is really hard for me. It's an even bigger challenge, but I do like using these spinning rods where I'm more comfortable. And by the way, these are launching in February. I've got a, a whole line of these, these ultralight to light series rods. This type of fishing is difficult for me because reading current, uh, reading, the rivers and things like that is not something that I'm used to. Even though that I've fished some bass places that kind of look like this, the way trout set up is just a little bit different. But I've done it enough times now to have a general idea of where I need to be casting and where these fish seem to concentrate. And the spot that me and dad are sitting right now is a tailwater of a trout raceway, a hatchery. And they need a lot of dissolved oxygen, so they need cold water, they need current to make that happen and they're dumping the current flow out into the river right here. So these trout have a pretty consistent form of current where they can use to feed. Adding the water they're letting out from the dam and it's making it even harder to read where these trout may be sitting. And as you guys are gonna see here later on in this video, the trout are everywhere. I'll show you underwater, but right now the, the current is ripping and it's hard to see anything under the water. The biggest thing I've learned over the last few years fishing for trout is you have to get the speed and the depth timing correct. Once you do that, it's like unlocking the secret. You start catching a lot of trout. Got it. Oh yeah. 
are your nets, sir? It took me some tinkering, but I figured out that about a three foot leader will get my fly just above the rocks where these trout are sitting. Even though the water isn't three foot deep, the drift is going to lift my fly up. That current's gonna lift it up. So I put a little longer leader on there, slightly weighted fly, and that mixture is getting that fly into that you know few inches off the bottom where it's gonna run right into their face. There we go. Beautiful rainbow trout. That might be a PB for me. Beautiful. Look at that one. Woo! That is beautiful. All right, back to the beeps. See you, buddy. No fly rod. Yeah. Yeah, on the old, uh, on the old good and gold, baby. Nice. So the cast that I'm attempting to make every time is where my float is just out of the current. It's not in the heavy current where it's just flying by, but it's just out of that heavy current. And that's where the trout are going to likely sit. They don't want to fight the hard current the whole time. They want to find a little seam where they can sit there and see things that are coming by and grab them and not waste too much energy. Sounds easy, but when you're trying to throw something about the size of a booger, it becomes pretty difficult. Oh, he, oh, he ate mine. Did you see that? He came up and ate my bobber. That was a big one. I was wondering what they were thinking about that. <clears throat> they probably eat a dry fly. There you go. Good job. LFD. Oh, I just had another one. Me on the fly. Yeah, let them dance a little bit. Let them dance. Yeah, yeah. I don't want him to dance too much. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's a pretty good job. After about 30 minutes or so of fishing, the dam actually stopped pulling the water and the water quickly went from our hips down to our knees. And all of a sudden I could see how many fish were down there. The water got still, the current calmed down, and it was amazing. Now compared to other trout rivers that I've fished where they stock these trout every week, this place only stocks them about once a month. So these trout have time to learn and a lot of people catch and release them and they have figured out to follow around fishermen at their boots. I was amazed to see just walking around on the bottom that these trout will follow you and just start schooling around your feet, picking up this, these little crustaceans that are coming up. You would think if you just stuck your little fly right down there while they're schooling around your feet, they would eat it, but they can see really well that water's clear and they're smart they know the program. I gotta say, I've fished a lot of different places, but this is one of the craziest things I have ever seen. When that current calmed down, the sun peaked out a little bit, the amount of trout that you could see swarming around your feet, it was just something I've never experienced before. Look 
guy. Man, Little bitty dude. See you, buddy. I'm sure you can get some bigger ones in the low light. Chug. You on? Oh, mine came off. One of the other big lessons I've learned with trout, it's hard to get them to buy them in the first place, but man, getting them in the net with conventional style gear is difficult. They fight way different than bass do. Uh, they jump a little bit where they're constantly shaking their heads. They have very soft tissue in their mouth and you need light gear. So obviously a fly rod is the best choice to, to keep them pinned you get like a four weight fly rod and that thing is just a rubber band it's going to keep them hooked up but when you're using spinning gear you got to have a light rod it's got to be a light or an, an ultra light you know a medium even a medium light is getting a little stiff for trout and you cannot set the hook you just gotta lift up lean into them keep light pressure on them and let them do their thing. Let, let them dance around. It's not like a bass where you're trying to sling them in to the net. Like you just need to let them do their thing and so gently you scoop them up. Flies on or you, uh, you got one on. Right. Oh yeah. Feels like he's got a little thunder on him. Got a little weight. Um, it's a little green bug. That's all I know. I'll show you. It's a little green one. Oh my goodness, look at that. Good at that? Uh, yeah, he's got one. Beauty. Let you go, buddy. That's awesome. PB. PB. Oh man, that was cool. Here you go. Now I know about as much about fly fishing flies as I do about the French language, but I can tell you the bottom fly that I'm using, it's a nymph, it's an olive color and it is catching all of the trout. I put another fly on top of it about 10 inches up that's tiny. I, I couldn't even tell you what that is called. It's something my dad had. Please let me know in the comments what you think this is. It looks like a piece of lint, but this little nymph is doing pretty good and it's catching all the fish. As far as my float goes, this is a pretty unique little float. You can fill it with water you know, about halfway, give it a lot of weight. It's still buoyant, so you can cast it really far. I got it for fishing out west for some of the mountain lakes. Now this float is a little overweighted for the rig that I'm fishing, but if I was fishing on the bank and I didn't have waders, this would be a good option to cast all the way out there into those little seams where I couldn't reach with a regular bobber. looks pretty big. We don't need that net again, sir. Burn me out. Sorry, Dad. Look at the color on that one. That's a brown. That's, no, I think it's a rainbow. It's colorful. BB again? Wow. 
what is that? Is that like a hybrid? It looks like a brown. I think that's a brown. Wow. All right, let me go. Oh, that's a good one there. That's what I put on. Yeah. It's a pretty big difference. They can see. Golly, look at that one. That's a toad. That guy's got a giant on. Look at that. This guy's big. Oh, that. Oh, man. <laughs> got him, got him. Oh, that's a good one, Dad. Easy, 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 easy. Easy. Let him run a little bit. Oh, yeah. A little late on that hook set. Saw me. Got a little. It's a brown. It's a brown. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. That's so nice. Woo, cute. Man, you gotta unhook him and get a photo. Good job. All right, good. There he goes. Nice one. Hey, good job, Dad. Thank you, sir. Is that your biggest brown ever? Yeah, I think so. It's about the same size as the one I caught before. But... Man, I put up a fight. I'm good with ending on that one. That <laughs> was too. awesome. Me too, man. Catch your PB. It's <laughs> nice. PB, rainbow, <laughs> PB brown. Pretty good day out on the river for a couple of crappie bass fishermen. LFD. Yeah. Post, post game report, do you feel like a winner? I do. You know, we came down. We didn't have all the information about this type of fishing. No, you drug me into this mess, and I, I, I'm fully appreciative. And, uh, hey, we whacked them. We you you whacked them. We kind of did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PBs. PBs produce. PBs on brown. I mean, obviously, browns get huge. Yeah. But that was an amazing fight. I caught a huge rainbow. And you caught one more when I, when I was Yeah, it up was here. a nice rainbow. It was probably two pounds. Flies on the GS. You don't see that every day. <laughs> don't see that every day hey one of those was uh i got out of that big uh trout's mouth yeah, that was cool yeah there was that one right there so yeah. somebody broke off and then you said i got this yeah two or, pound line yeah that you had two pound line yeah see i had four but we were getting a lot of bites yeah. a lot of bites i was the only guy out there without a fly rod I was that guy the bass guy okay but I had light, light spinning gear, and I had that pistol peat rigged up. I had a, a little gray fly, which I don't even know what you call that thing. It was like a little booger. And then I had that little, a little sinking moss-colored fly, and then they're whacking them. I mean, there was a guy that came over and asked me what I was using, which I would have not expected. Put that, uh, put that little sinking fly on, and put it right in that current with my little floater. Hey. I was doing just the same thing as uh, as the fly, just not as beautiful. Just not, you know, the fly rod, you got the indicator. It wasn't as beautiful as that, but we were getting it done. So thank you guys for joining me on the river today, and I'll see you back in the great outdoors. God bless you.